Hey guys, hope everyone is doing well today. Uh, so for this video, we are going to talk more about hype. We're going to talk a little bit about how to identify uh, cards that are being hyped, uh, which is very important. And then we're going to talk about strategies that I use to try and make the most out of hyped cards uh, so that I can benefit myself both as a collector and investor uh, financially. All right. So first thing to talk about with hype is, uh, and, and I think the right place to start is that the easiest way to determine if something is being hyped is if you are hearing and seeing a lot of influencers and then people in their comment sections, people on Facebook, people on Instagram, you know, any and all social media platforms talking about how valuable and wonderful an item, a, a card is, or a set is, or, you know, an asset is, whatever it is, without giving uh, any sort of reasons <laughs> that relate to the fundamentals of that item. Now, there are a, a host of really important fundamentals to any items that we, that we talk about on this channel from basically anything that affects supply or demand of that, of that item is going to be a fundamental of what makes that item valuable or likely valuable over time or more valuable than another item that doesn't have those, those fundamentals or, or, or uh, uh, has, has worse fundamentals, basically. So some of those, those fundamentals might be, you know, on, on the supply side would be something like rarity. How, you know, how many of these cards do we think exist? How many of these cards do we think exist in high grade? Those sorts of questions. If you hear people talking about that, that's a good sign. If you hear people talking about uh, that the Pokemon's really popular, that the art is really cool, that's also a good sign. Of course, those things are far more subjective and can, and can shift and change, and so you have to be careful about those things. But those things are vitally important to what makes a Pokemon card valuable both now and in the future. Uh, another example might be the history, you know, uh, of a card, the release, um, you know, those, those, there might be a special story behind the card that makes it subjectively valuable to that individual and then likely subjectively valuable to, to a lot of individuals, which is what's going to keep the demand high on that item. Uh, and at the end of the day, what, what should determine price and what, what will determine price in the long run are, is the supply and the, and the demand. And so those are good reasons why demand is going to be high. Supply is very objective. Supply just is what it is, okay? Um, but demand can also be affected by hype. And, and that's where, where, where it can be dangerous. A lot of people telling you how great an item is and that you should buy an item, even if they don't give you reasons, can, can, can get a lot of people excited and make a lot of people start buying that item. Uh, one terrible... Uh, reason to buy something is because it's expensive. And that's something that, that I hear a lot of people hyping things up around price. They say, this this item has gone up 10 times in value, so it's a very good investment vehicle, when that's that's actually not true at all. In fact, any item that goes up 10%, 10 times, sorry, excuse me, 10 times in value, there's probably a lot of risk in, in that item, actually. And what you should do is you should look at the fundamentals to try and figure out why did it go up 10 times in value? Should it should it have gone up that much? Is it going to retain that value versus some of these other items? So that's that's one area where a lot of hype can be created is around prices and seeing new high prices can create a lot of excitement and lower people's critical thinking skills and abilities and heighten their sort of gambling, you know, let's just go for it. I don't really know what's happening here, but it keeps going up and I don't want to miss out on those profits. That That is very hype driven. Um, another thing that can be harder to see and can really hurt people is what happens often in hype-driven items and cards is that the actual vast majority of the market um, doesn't think that item or that card is that great, but there are a few people falling for the hype that are all sort of bidding things up in the short run. But the vast majority of the collector base and the people are not going to actually be able to, are not going to want those items and actually think those, those values are crazy. And 
it's going to cause those items to come back. We see this a lot in the stock market um, where there's a lot of high volume trading going on on a small percentage of a company where the vast majority of the owners of the company are just sort of sitting there thinking that that you know, these price evaluations don't really make sense and are watching it happen and then sort of getting ready to sell when it calms down. So you might see that type of thing where there's there's a lot of kind of, a lot of them were gambling, buying, selling, flipping individuals are, there's a lot of volatility on the same items sort of being flipped and sold all over and over again, causing a lot of that movement, whereas the vast majority of those cards in that market are actually not moving at all, all in collections. Um, so that's a very difficult thing to keep track of. I try to keep track of that um, on PSA cards because I try to keep track of certain cards that I watch very closely. How much is it just the same slab being sold over and over again versus how much of, of the rest of the market? And that that's the type of stuff that's really going to bring you to the next level in terms of your your predicting prices and your, your making smart, safe investments, okay? Okay. Um, so uh, hopefully that th those two things make sense for you. Um, so how do I use all of this, right? That's really the main question is how do I, once I've identified hype, and I think the, ma the majority of people watching this channel, I think are probably pretty aware and pretty good at identifying what items are, are potentially being hyped or likely being hyped right now. And there are good items, very good items that can be hyped. So what, but what happens is instead of the fundamentals being talked about, it's the price point being talked about. It's the excitement around, you know, that it's that it's just going up that continues to drive the price up rather than people actually responding to the item and buying it for its fundamentals. So just because an item is, is, is hyped doesn't mean it's a bad item or that that item shouldn't be valuable at all. It often means that that item is just a bit overinflated to very overinflated in price, and there will likely be a, a correction at some point, okay? Uh, given no, no huge dramatic change in, in, in demand, which we, no one can predict right now because a lot of these items can be saved by just a lot more people you know, continuing to come into the hobby, you know, Logan Paul or other people continuing to, to make videos and, and bring more and more interest into it. Um, okay, so what do I do? So when I see an item being hyped or notice that an item, that I think an item is being hyped, first I investigate that. Is this item really being hyped or is there something I've missed about this item? Are there fundamentals here? Are there subjective elements about the coolness of the art? Do, I, I literally go out and I do research and I ask people who are paying high prices. I contact sellers who are selling it. I say, you know, what are people saying when they buy this card? What are people saying when they buy that booster box? Are they really excited to own that product? Are they talking a lot about like, oh, they've wanted that card forever or that card really spoke to them in some sort of way? Or are they very focused on the money? Is that item coming quickly back on to the market to flip or to sell? Um, that's the type of stuff that I'm looking at to try and, and study and determine is this item being hyped or not. So once I determine that there's probably some hype around this item, I look at, okay, are there some things about this item that are actually good? And is there an item that has a lot of these properties that maybe were the reasons why the item started getting popular before it ended up being sort of, we could call hyped or too hyped? And if I see any of those things, I try to go elsewhere where in the market to items that don't have the awareness or the hype that they should, okay? And this is very key. So if I look at a modern promo that's getting a lot of attention, you know, one of the, you know, those staff cards from, from Vivid Voltage, those, um, uh, which there was hype around, those uh, uh, Delivery Pikachu, which there was hype around, those full art cards, um, uh, which there was hype around. And all three of the, 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 the waifu cards, there's hype around all of these cards, all of these items, okay? But there were also really good fundamentals and things that made these items exciting and valuable too. And so what you do is you can look at those things and then look elsewhere in the market for items that have 
better qualities than those items, but just don't have the YouTubers talking about them. Don't have every comment section talking about them. When everyone in a hobby is aware of an item and is thinking it's the next hot thing and, and the next exciting thing, generally good to go away from that attention because likely there's going to be some hype built into that. Okay. Um, so that's one option. Another option is to look at what is to try and predict what is going to be hyped next or what type of items get hyped or what YouTubers tend to have the most success in hyping up items and following them closely and then trying to time time those cards and time the trends. And we're seeing a lot of people doing that right now. We're seeing a lot of people buying lots and lots of these like modern promos that they know some of these YouTubers are going to talk about and then quickly either express grading them or trying to sell a lot of them raw, trying to source a lot of them from Japan. Um, doing a lot of that sort of uh, uh, prep work to be ready for when that YouTuber hypes it, for when people start to talk about it. Um, I tend not to really take that approach uh, because to me, it just feels too risky and I'm not someone who likes to buy and sell a lot. I'm someone who I prefer to buy an item and hold it for a long time. So ideally, I'm looking for items that I think will hold and continue to grow and retain value and or explode in value because of severely undervalued, you know, properties about them uh, uh, in the next, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. That's sort of my investing strategy. So I actually, I study the hype to try and understand what it is that attracts these, these, um, what it, what it is that attracts people to these items so that I can better, uh, understand the overall psychology of the market about what people value. And then I can apply that to items that have those types of subjective fundamentals, but also the, the really important supply side stuff that everyone, that the vast majority of people are greatly, greatly, don't either are greatly underestimating or don't, don't think is real or don't care about right now. Um, uh, so I hope that, that, that is helpful for everyone, that quick sort of breakdown on hype and discussion on hype. Let me know what you guys think in, in the comment section. How are you dealing with hype? You know, one thing I will say is that it, it can feel frustrating to miss out on these types of items and these types of, of profit, but people are often going to show you only their big gains <laughs> in these sorts of things. And they're not going to talk about and publicly share how much they've lost in Pokemon when a lot of these very hyped items then go down, you know, 80%. And so a lot of the, those Instagram stories and a lot of those YouTube channels and people telling you about how much money they've made in Pokemon and how amazing they're doing and that you should, you know, that there's, that, you know, there's, that supply doesn't matter and fundamentals don't matter. It just, you know, listen to other people and buy what's hyped and, and that like any of that sort of feeling. Um, they are likely also have already lost quite a bit of money um, on certain items that have strongly retraced and will likely lose a lot of money time and time again on, on these types of items. You know, there are other people who are engaging in that sort of stuff that, um, are really just doing pump and dump type schemes around that hype. And they're very, very well aware of how to use hype to their benefit. Um, that is one, you know, and the last thing I'll talk about here is you can really, if you decide to hype up cards or hype up things or get other people, that's an extremely powerful um, uh, tool to use. But the reality is that you are hurting people um, in the process. You're hurting them financially. Now, some people argue, I think, that that uh, it's all fair game and that this is an open competitive market space and, and people should, you know, can you use whatever tools they, they want to use to try and get an edge on everyone else? Uh, I don't really have an answer for that. I think that the best thing you can do is be aware that there's a certain percentage of the market and a percentage of people that is always going to try and do that. Uh, and try and get you to believe things that aren't true for their own benefit. 
uh, or believe things that they really hope is true, but they don't really have good uh, data to back it up. Um, so, you know, just be careful out there with that, with that sort of stuff. If you are going to engage and flip in sort of that, mo in this modern space, there's a lot of money to be made, but you have to be very good at controlling and regulating your emotions and very good at timing these things. And I also would be very careful not to, not to leverage yourself too much or to put too much at risk because I would expect to continue to see large swings in prices for the foreseeable future. Uh, in, in particularly now modern items, we will also see that, see that in, in vintage items too. And, and vintage items, um, uh, were, re were receiving a lot of hype about around the time of Logan Paul. There were a number of vintage items that were really being hyped up a lot, um, that people weren't talking about good fundamentals. And I think that we saw what happened there is that channels like mine that were actually talking about fundamentals ended up being right on, you know, the unlimited, uh, you know, base set cards on the first edition commons and on commons because we understood the the supply side. And that's going to very, very likely happen again on a lot of these modern products unless the demand side just kind of saves that market or continues to push that market up for, for a certain degree of time. I actually think that vintage is, is – um, a lot of that hype has left vintage, which is a really, really good thing for vintage if you want to start buying again sort of slowly and calmly into that market. Um, if anything, there's been a – I've seen a rational um, – irrational videos about vintage. You know, uh, there's a lot of people hyping modern saying that modern has grown more than vintage this year and, uh, you know, giving false information when in reality vintage on a on – a, by a percentage to percentage card, the vast majority of vintage, particularly your high end, you know, Watsy Hollow first edition cards, have seen really huge growth. You know, Tops and Cardass, and uh, the vast majority of modern um, has, you know, seen only double, triple growth. You know, on even like a lot of the Chase cards from these sets, which is still crazy good growth, but compared to the five to ten times on a lot of these vintage cards, is still a lot smaller. And that isn't being talked about in these videos, which is part of what is getting people excited and overconfident and irrationally exuberant about a number of these things. So be careful out there. Um, uh, at the end of the day, no one can predict, uh, particularly in the short term, what is going to happen. Um, uh, these are just my opinions at the end of the day, uh, and I hope that they help you at least think critically and make better decisions for yourself. All right, I will talk to you all again soon. Take care.